Lord, now that we are waiting in shadow. For your truth to be seen within thy better, despite what many have thought to seek. The truth will always reach me. Lord, now for the Bible, the Lord of Magic, may it arrive. Hello guys and welcome to the Friday Night Show. This is The Lost Magics and I just would like to give a big shout out to all of our sponsors and supporters that come in and give us everything that we need to be able to be who we are today. Also a big shout out to Parapost and to DNTV and to all of the networks and that, that are supporting us and helping us. And obviously a big shout out to the Bold and Bonker boys which are the guys that I'm part of the company of. And obviously to all of our angels that are in the room as well, a big welcome to all of you. And I hope that you're having a lovely day. So tonight's topic on the Lost Magics is alien abduction, guys. So I'm going to talk to you and give you a little bit of information on what it is believed that alien, ad alien abduction is. Then there is 10 facts and signs that you may have been abducted by aliens i will say to you that just because of these theories it doesn't mean that if you're having one or two of these that you have been abducted by aliens but obviously if you can resemble to that and maybe you're getting further activity going on with you and more strange things going on then there is a possibility that you may have been and not every abductee is actually aware that they've been taken by the aliens or extraterrestrials as they like to be called so i will be doing those and then we're going to go into two of the most known alien abduction cases that are known around the world and these people that are classed as abductees are known to be some of the most truth telling people in a category to do with being abducted by extraterrestrials they had done a number of different tests, had a number of strange things that happened to them that cannot be explained and most definitely does link in with people that have had alien abduction. Now, I talk as somebody that has had experiences with extraterrestrial and continuing to even now, but I have also been an abductee. And I have had an experience where I was taken by a UFO and lost time. And I can resemble to a lot of what I'm going to read you out. And I can resemble to some of what these cases say as well, you know, because it is a fascinating subject and uh, something that very much happens in my beliefs due to being somebody that's been through this myself. I will 100% say that alien abductions happen. There was a, a time in my life where I wasn't so sure. I believed in them. I believed that they were around, but I thought that when people said about alien abduction and stuff like that, I thought it was a bit far-fetched until it happened to me. And ever since then, things have just opened more and more, definitely more since I came into the division with Dakota, Chris and all of the other guys and me and Tim from UFO Man and things like that. A lot of stuff about what happened to me has started to open. I've been in communication in several ways, which come to a shock, in my opinion, when it first happened. But I wasn't really going to expect that nothing wouldn't, because obviously with my record of what I do with spirit, I thought that, you know, anything could be possible. I can communicate with anything if they want me to. So they clearly showed that that is the fact and the, and the way. So... Let's get into this show and let me just see who's in the room first and say hello to everybody. So we have got my sister Dobby. It's hello, sweet. It's lovely to see you in here. We have got Chris from Bold and Bonkers. Hello. So at the minute we've got four people. Please share out, guys. Let people know that we are on. We are also live on the TV air, um, channel to do with me. We're also going over a number of different platforms and being put out there by loads and loads of different supporters and obviously 
the people that support us 100% as well, which is obviously those that sponsor us and stuff. So please, please pass out there, guys. So I'm not going to leave you to wait any longer, and I'm going to come up with what I want to speak to you about. So the first thing I'm going to talk to you about with this subject is actual facts about what it's believed that alien abduction is and then obviously giving you the 10 signs and facts that you may have been abducted by aliens extraterrestrials excuse me a minute Alien abduction, sometimes also called abduction phenomenon. Alien abduction syndrome or UFO abduction refers to the phenomenon of people reporting what they believe to be the real experience of being kidnapped by extraterrestrial beings and subjected to physical and physiological exper experimentation. Most scientists and mental health professionals explain these experiences by fact factors such as suggestibility, false memory syndrome, sleep paralysis and deception. And physiologically sceptic Robert Sheffer sees similarities between the alien abducted in the science fiction films, in particular invaders from Mars, and some of those reported to have eventually abducted people. People claiming to have been abducted are usually called abductees or experiencers. Typical claims involve forced medical examinations that emphasise the subject's reproductive system. Abductees sometimes claim to have been warned against environmental abuses and the dangers of nuclear weapons or to have engaged in interspecies breeding the content of the abduction narrative often seems to vary with the home culture of the alleged abductee ufo alien abduction and mind control plots can also be part of radical political apocalyptic and melamarine narratives reported of abduction phenomenon has been made all around the world but most are most common in english-speaking countries especially the united states the first alleged alien abduction claim to be widely publicized was the betty and barney hill abduction in 1961. the ufo abduction claim have been declined since their internal surge in the mid 1970s and alien abduction narratives have found less popularity in mainstream media skeptic michael shear proposes that the equality of camera phones increases the burden of evidence for such claims and may be the cause for the decline i don't believe in all of that i do believe that you know if you've got a good camera or you've got a good camera recorder, you've got just as much chance and opportunity of catching something really cool that happens in the sky or even in the paranormal. OK, so it's just about having the right equipment and being there at the right times. OK, and with this sort of work as well, it doesn't just fall into your hands. There is a lot of waiting around and you've got to have a lot of patience, guys, because it happens when they want it to happen. OK, and that is just how it is in anything strange and you're unknown. So, alien abduction is something where an extraterrestrial or an alien being comes to a human. This can be in their home, in their bed, this could be in a car, this could be outside, it can be anywhere. They can abduct you from anywhere. And not the most known common signs of that is lost time and not remembering where you went. 
some people will feel things like they might feel that something weird's been put into their body or they may feel that they've been touched and been examined in strange ways there are a lot of different ways that you can come to tell about alien abductees okay and um abduction itself is just where they come into our physical world they take us for things like medical examinations um for some of us it's probably to enhance our bodies and to open us more because there may be more of a connected side to them there are so many different reasons to why abductions happen not all of them are nice and some of them are experiences are different with different abductees you've got those that have turned around and said that when they were abducted it was the most scary and most horriblest experience of their life but others they've said that it was genuine and it was nice and it was kind and they were friendly to them so there is so many different sorts of sayings in how abductees are actually treated when they go on their abduction for me i for a long time did not know what happened to me all i remember is seeing this craft and seeing this light and being gone for so long and coming back and being at another end of a road that we had, wouldn't have drove down because it was right up the other end and it would have took a good five minutes to get down it so it was very puzzling to us until up till when i met dakota and and things like that and I started to open up a lot more i come to realize that my abduction experience wasn't actually that unpleasant it was actually not a nasty experience and um, i'm starting to see that there was certain things that they were doing around me because i was different because i was part of them obviously i didn't know that until i came into communication with uh, dakota and that and certain things started ha- happening and and st- i started opening so it's, it, it it's really mad and a lot of people would go into having like um different treatments and things which is what we're going to be talking about in the next show next week guys so now let's just move on to the actual signs that you can get when being abducted so this is my view first though i myself as someone who has had experiences with ufos and extraterrestrials i feel strongly that abduction stories can be very real there are a lot of skeptics out there but there is proof and more evidence coming forward that shows we can't keep hiding the facts that aliens and ufos are in fact real in my opinion so that was my little go over we shall now move on to some of the well known abduction stories and the symptoms and stuff of how you can tell if you've been abducted then we will move on to the candidates that i have chose for this so the 10 signs that you might have already been abducted by aliens okay most of us know and understand the general idea of alien abduction and what it might entail it usually includes being taken from your car or a lonely road or even from your bed and then transported into a hovering flying saucer in a bizarre and intense light for example however for for however from the many accounts on record it is possible to build up a checklist of sorts and should you suddenly find yourself experiencing any of all of these you may want to pay attention just maybe you might have already been unknowing and uh, an unknowing victim of an alien abduction what follows then are 10 apparent telly ta- telltale signs that you may be have been visited by a being of another planet so with the phenomena raging high let's get on with this so starting from number 10 strange windows of missing time perhaps the biggest indicator of alien abduction is the sudden realization of missing time These windows can last for a few minutes to up to several hours. Quite often those suffering from these disturbing episodes turn to hypnotic regression to unlock these repressed memories. Identically, their use of such techniques divide opinion, but these techniques divide opinion. 
even in the UFO community. Many skeptics suggest that the results achieved under hypnosis are irreliable. Some even claim that they are sim simply cases of the witnesses being led by the person performing the session. We should also note, though, that many others believe hypnotic regression to be very credible. What's more, it is used often for various reasons outside of the UFO circles. Obviously, the longer the amount of time a person can't account for, the more unnerved they feel. That edginess that turns to constant anxiety, and that is where we will turn our attention to next. The sudden feeling of constant anxiety. A sudden feeling of anxiety is often recalled by many who have discovered they have been abducted by aliens. What more? This panicked state often results in other issues. For example, many have suddenly sudden many have sudden feelings of having to be ready to go on the run at any moment. They don't, however, know who or what they are running from or why. It is perhaps worth nothing. One of the most famous cases of alien abduction is the Betty and Barney Hill case. Before regression revealed their encounters, they would speak of how they would suddenly be keeping a packed bag by their door. This was ready to loan into their car should they need to make a quick getaway from whatever or whoever they, di they didn't know. Again, such sudden anxiety can develop for a whole host of reasons that have nothing to do with alien reduction. However, when experienced with one or more of the other points of our list, it is perhaps worth taking note of them. Number eight, hearing strange noises while going in and out of sleep. Many paranormal researchers suggest that the moment when a person is going in and coming out of sleep are the import are of importance. This is some claim when they or perhaps their mind are most open to unknown energies and the surround that surrounds us. Many abductees have reported hearing chatter and whispers of these strange entities during this time. These little under there's little under, these little understood moments, even today, are the subject of debate. As far as alien abduction are concerned, through some researchers believe these sounds are actually the last memories of the conscious mind. Perhaps it was recalling the beginning or the end of the alien abduction incident. For example, many people report hearing a strange machine-like buzzing during these moments. Might these sounds be of a genuine alien aircraft? Other sounds include metallic tapping noises, and perhaps most unsettling, the constant sound of strange voices speaking an equally strange language, such as notions, are nothing more than speculation. However, many who claim alien abduction often mention some details and that that means we surely can't ignore it completely. Number seven, the appearance of unusual markings on the body. Perhaps as much as missing time, another alleged clear indicator of alien abduction is the sudden appearance of strange markings. These are often red dots or squares and usually are reg regularly spaced on the body, as if from a purposely designed template. What's more, these markings are often in particular patterns and not sim simple, a mark or, or bruise, and not simply a mark or a bruise. Indeed, the markings are very similar to branding. Most often, these marks fade after several days. 
Might these bizarre dots, squares and circles and a whole host of other shapes be physically pr- physical proof of the alien abduct encounters? If we accept that many people who have made such claims are genuine, then then it is certainly an area of intrigue and a detail that can't be dismissed without further study. Identically, these strange markings often result in the discovery of strange pieces of metal buried within the abductee's body. We will come back to this at another point. Number six, waking up in a different place from where you fell asleep. Many people sleepwalk and they do so for a variety of reasons. However, many of those who make claims of alien abduction also claim that they have often woke up in a different room of their house. And what's more, they are often unclothed or redressed in their clothes, but in a pathetic order, as if they had been dressed by someone who had little idea on how such clothing should be worn. Even stranger, the apparent abductees often wait to find dirt or soil on their feet or even with cuts or scratches to their legs or arms. Similar to markings they may receive from walking outside while being ill-dressed to do so. There could be many reasons for these strange encounters, however, Once more, when combined with some of the other points on our list, they just might be a concern to some, perhaps especially if they are experiencing alongside the details of our next stop. Intense nightmares and leading to insomnia. Everyone has a nightmare from time to time. In fact, it would be quite strange if we're not to have a frightening dream every now and then. However, many people who have claimed to be abductees also claim to begin having extremely intense night terrors. In fact, so bad are these dreams that they usually lead to a state of insomnia. According to the many files of the subjects, these nightmares usually feature Creature with large eyes, more intriguingly, many witnesses claim that owls haunt these strange and intense dreams. We should note that some researchers liken the intense dreams should not liken the owl's image to a to a confused sighting of a grey alien. With this in mind, it is perhaps easy to see why people who make such claims, often exhibit often traits such as phenomena. Even if these events are only in their minds, they most often lead to the drained state they will find themselves in. This, as ironic as it might be, most often harms their credibility. Most often harms their credibility in the eyes of the wider public. Number four, bizarre effects around electronical equipment. Another point of intrigue is that many alien abductees often witness electronic equipment acting strangely when they are near. And these can be anything from small devices such as alarm clocks to televisions and computers. In more extreme cases, these electronic storages result in small fires. In some cases, abductees claim high electronic bills begin to arrive out of nowhere as if they were somehow draining the power system of their homes. In most cases, a reason for such high usage escapes the energy's providers. Perhaps even stranger, many abductees who report such problems also report having a strange and constant buzzing in their ears. Quite often, this buzzing takes place when a device might be acting strangely. Might this suggest a link between the two? 
perhaps some kind of release of electronical energy from the abductees and the respective electronical equipment. These are repeated examples of this type of activity in the files of the UFOs and alien investigators, particularly those who focus on the claims of alien abduction. Sorry guys, I've got really bad sinuses. Number three, sudden paranormal activity and shadow people. The link between paranormal activity and alien abduction is stronger than many people might think. Perhaps one of the strangest Perhaps one of the strongest of these ghostly encounters is the claims of abductees seeing shadow people in and around their home. These shadow people are also call, called as they are nothing but a black bodied shaped figure. As even more unnerving, they are seen only from the corner of the person's eye and only then for a very brief time. Could these be alien entities moving around a person's home, maybe using unknown to us cloaking technology? Or might alien abductees be more of a paranormal experience than a cosme cosmetic one? Even more intriguing, other paranormal encounters are also reported by abductees. These include such chilling incidents as fast foaming fogs or mist out of nowhere, these claims might be easy to dismiss. This is if it wasn't for the several people who have managed to capture such strange entities in photographs or better still, after having set up a CCTV. Remember the constant anxiety? They have spotted these shadowy forms moving across the screen. Number two, a sudden development of physic and telepathic ability. Perhaps one of the strongest signs of alien reduction is a sudden ability to foresee future events and in some cases even the abilities to use telepathy. There are various theories as to why this might be, not least that such strange events might result in channels opening in the brain that have previously been shut off. Whether that event was real or imagined it would appear it's not an important factor as well as these physical abilities many people also speak of the sudden awareness of the world around them others seemingly mention that they have a sudden understanding of the powers of the universe could close contact with these alien creatures even if only imagined results in the opening of these channels in the human mind and in the simple and simply a result of such an encounter or might it be purposefully a purposefully act and if so why would aliens wish for us to have the use of such powers there's lots of reasons to why they would do that and Finally, number one, alien implants. Alien implants, guys, are one like the losing the, the time and the window. Alien implants are also a very well-known factor for people that say that they've been abducted. They will find, as it said, markings. For some people, they can feel some sort of tool or something under their skin. They can feel like either a squared or a circle shape. In certain areas and some of these people that have had this done and had like x-rays and that it doesn't always show up these um these tools that these these abduct abductees have had put in them by the extraterrestrials some of these do not show up it depends on what it is and where it's put to where you're going to see it some of, of the abductees that have had the x-rays and things have been able to have areas x-rayed and you're, you're able to see a strange object in the person's body but for some others it, it, it's not shown up it does vary in 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 people and it's if they want that to be shown and, and things as well so alien implants perhaps one of the biggest signs of alien abduction is the discovery of strange pieces of metallic 
or stone-like materials inside the body. These implants are often found during visits to the dentist or when receiving treatment for another medical condition. In some instances, these strange implants simply fall out of the person's body during a nosebleed. For example, most people attempt to preserve such implants for testing. However, even more bizarrely, these devices often simply melt away into nothing. Why they are placed into someone, some people and by whom remains unknown. It would appear they are some kind of tag. Indeed, many people who have come to realise they are a victim of an alien abduction also realise that such events have happened over many years, sometimes even in different locations as the person moves around during their lives. Perhaps of all of our points, implants might be the most de definitive and solid proof of a truly bizarre encounter. So they were the areas on fact and the history, I guess, behind what they believe that alien abduction is, guys. So that is that side of it, me giving you the facts and stuff. So now I'm going to move on to the side where I talk to you about two of the very well-known cases in ufology to do with abductees, okay? And these are very well-known cases. These are looked at to be some of the most truth-telling factors of alien abduction due to medical treatments and um, different things that were found on these um, people and the simple fact that they've done tests which would be able to prove if what they are seeing or ex explaining is in fact real and these tests were passed by these people okay along with other tests that were done with them to test if they would like flick through and I will explain a little bit more as I go through with them so this one is done so I hope you enjoyed that part of it guys and I hope that that helped you to understand a little bit more factor on UFOs themselves like how abductions are meant to be and some of the signs as well hello sister and brother from Smith family how are you hello mittens my angel I hope that you're okay and hello to anybody else that is in the room Hope that you're all okay. I will be posting some links out shortly, guys. Right. So my first case to do with alien abduction that I want to talk to you guys about. Now, it's not a big piece, okay, guys, because obviously I wasn't going to go into full story about it, but you will get the, the basics behind what happened with this. So the first case that I want to talk to you about, and which is one of the most known alien abduction cases in the world, is the Betty and Barney Hill abduction. Now, this abduction happened in 1969, and... It was from Berkshire's UFO incident. So these two people were husband and wife. Back in the day when they had this experience, things such as paranormal and alien abductions and these sort of things would have been things that were very much frowned upon. So to come out with a story like this would be a pretty powerful one and you would have to be pretty knowing that that is what happened and not only that with these two but these were also a mixed race couple as well with Betty being white and Barney being of mixed race okay so that would be another factor to why they wouldn't really want to be putting their self out there for no reason okay guys so straight away this ran quite real to a lot of people because of the factor of who they were at that time of in life things were very different to now people weren't as acceptance about uh, different racial relationships they weren't happy about things like paranormal and ufology and strange but true and all that sort of stuff they were very against this so for somebody to bring this sort of story out 
it would be for a good reason. OK, so Barney and Betty were abductees that went through some very phenomenal experiences. Betty was even able to be able to read out a star sign system, at which at the time they didn't really believe in what she was saying. But when going into doing some research to do with up in the sky and that, they actually see a star system pattern that was very similar to what Betty had drawn down and explained in her examinations and experiments that they wanted to do on her after her abduction so you had that you then you had their car that had burn and had the radiation over it which could not be explained and to the prominent way of what was on their body it would have had to equivalent in them being in somewhere where there was loads of radioactive material now obviously anyone that's abducted knows that this sort of material is very much seen in a lot of alien abductions abductees will have fibers and things on their clothing that is apparent with those sort of things betty most definitely did as well as having a part of her skirt that was torn in a complete straight line and just not the way that it would be done down here it there was just so many different things that the this couple that went through that was so unusual and can't be explained and very much equals up to two people that were abducted by extraterrestrials okay so there's read you the little bit of the story from the 1969 berkshire ufo incident to the eerie tale of barney and betty hill these alien abduction stories might even make skeptics believe that the truth is out there on september the 20 on september the 20th 1961 betty and barney hill were driving through the white mountains of new hampshire when they said a bright light came over and out of the sky two hours later they were back in their driveway with no memory of what had happened or where they had been according to the sub subsequent reports the couple had traveled to zeta reticuli reticuli a star system th the star system 39 light years from earth betty was even exp inexplicably able to draw an accurate detailed map of the sky as seen from the star this was the first noteworthy alien abduction story in modern history their tale captivated a nation that had scarily heard scarcely heard anything like it before and in the years that, that followed countless other tales of alien and UFO abductions emerged each containing new details of roach square overworldly creatures in 1971, there was a Pesculia incident where allegedly, allegedly saw the fishermen take from a riverbank in Mississippi and held captive aboard an alien ship. Then in 1978, there was a Travis Walton abduction during which a Texas man vanished for five whole days. While well, there has yet been, but while well, there has yet to be any proof of these first-hand accounts are real. The nine alien stories below are certainly detailed enough to cause chills. Barney and Betty Hill alien abduction story started it, it all. Barney and Betty took a spontaneous trip to the White Mountains of New Hampshire in September 1961, as he recounted in John G. Fuller's The Interpreted Journey from 1966. Barney needed a break from his night shift at the post office, while Betty was mentally exhausted from handling state children welfare cases. On the 
the last night of their makeshift honeymoon, the two found themselves in a vermit dinner ready to make the last dash home to Portsmouth, New Hampshire. By leaving at 10 p.m., they planned on arriving home around 2 a.m. On the road, Betty noticed a particularly bright star, perhaps a planet in the sky, when this sexual object began changing its course in a erotic manner. Betty was convinced it was a UFO. Her husband was not. Barney said, she said, if you think that's a satellite or a star, you're being completely ridiculous. As the object drew closer, Barney pulled the car to a stop and done with a gun in his hand, got out to investigate. As he approached the object, Barney saw what he would later describe as a pancake-like disc, glowing with brightened white light that was about the size of a jet. Feeling back to his car, he and Betty tried to evade the vessel, but was instead overcome with an intense drowsiness and immediately fell unconscious. The couple pulled into their driveway around dawn, unable to recall what had happened. Two hours of memory seemed to have been wiped from both of their minds. While Betty was convinced they had been been, had been encountered a UFO and later reported the sighting to the Air Force. Her husband was sceptical. It was only when the couple met with physicist Dr. Benjamin Simmons for a consultation in December 1963 that Barney changed his mind. Dr. Simmons found both to be suffering from crippling anxiety. Betty in particular manifest manifested hers in the form of a repetitive nightmarish dream. Dr. Simmons then put them under hypnosis, which reportedly yielded highly anonymous memories. Barney Hill recalled creatures with slanted eyes taking the couple aboard their UFO to conduct experiments on their naked bodies. Barney claimed that The beings took samples of hair, skin and nails clippings and then a six inch long needle was inserted into Barney's stomach. Betty told the Dr. Simmons that she later asked a being they knew asked a being they knew to be the leader where they were. It jokingly replied, if you don't know where you are, there wouldn't be any point in telling you where I am. During another hypnosis session in 1964, Betty reportedly drew a star map of the sky from memory as seen from the planet orbiting the star Zenta Reticuli. Most shocking above all was that this map was drawn with confounding accuracy and that Dr. Zeta Reticuli lies some 40 light years from Earth. Betty nearly spot was spot on. Reconcreation of the star surrounding and an actual star system remains one of the most intriguing aspects of, an, of all alien stories Eve ever reported. Ultimately, Barney and Betty Hill accounted, accounted led their Air Force to launch Project Blue Book, a shadowy intuitive that aimed to investigate domestic UFO science and also present a template for all the UFO abduction stories that have followed in the decades to come. So, with Betty and Barney, They were on their honeymoon, 
and it was the last day that they were coming home. They were in the car when they encountered this round disc shape object that they remember taking them into the UFO, being examined, having numerous different tests and stuff done on them. Now, at the time of the abduction, they did not remember any of this, but through going through hypnosis and the things that these special doctors in ufology use to see if a, a, an abduction is actually possibly true and has happened or not, these tests were done on Barney and on Betty, and they did pass all of these tests. There were significant things that had happened to Barney and to Betty that could not be explained. For instance, the car had burns on it. You were getting the radio active readings on the car and on their clothing. Betty had had this straight line cut in her skirt, which wouldn't have been able to have been done by anything here. Not that straight. Um, and then obviously going into having their hypnose and stuff like that, they were able to remember significant things that would, to this very day, be one of the most true telling stories of abductions due to be, never being able to be found out to have been lying and for the simple fact of the evidence and the things that was left from the abduction by the extraterrestrials to Betty and Barney. So this case to many is a very phenomenal case and one that many believe is true. M me, myself, I do. I believe 100% that Barney and Betty Hill were real life alien abductees. I do believe that everything that they went through and everything that they answered was truthful and it did show in those tests. Um, some of these tests are pretty hardcore that they do on you, so I can't see how they wouldn't be as accurate as what people are trying to say that they're like. Some of the people believe that they're not real and that they're not very good but I, I think that in this line of work that you know there would have been a lot of work done in these tests to make sure that, that they get the best accurate readings from so-called alien abductees and to my acknowledge and from what is wrote down by them and all of these years of them being supported and in what happened to them they are true life alien abductees okay guys like that that's just me 100% saying that I do believe that completely I don't know how you guys feel and as I always say in the show what you believe and choose to believe is up to you the same as these bits that I read to you about the so-called signs that you may get if you've been abducted please do not feel automatically that you have been abducted you do normally have several experiences and several things going on that would link to something of that so it could be that you're getting strange rights or you're going somewhere things like this if you're having a prominent onwards activity after this so-called experience you feel that you had then there is a possibility and obviously if you've had strange dreams but you've never recalled being took but then other strange things are happening you could possibly be an abductee as well but it's not 100 percent accurate that you would have been like these signs are signs but like i said every person is different So the last one that I want to talk to you about is the Charles Hickson and Calvin Parker abduction case. OK, these men claimed that they were abducted by aliens in Mississippi and they also went forward to the authority about this encounter. When the officers and that were phoned, at first they thought that these guys were on something or they maybe they were mucking about. Uh, and things like that but they had to take on the call because it's obviously an emergency call so when they go out they they see these guys they see these guys are pretty traumatic and they they're a bit shook up what by what's happened so they ask them a few questions and they answer and they say that they're going to take them back to the police station so that's what they do they take them back to the police station where they s sit there and they talk to them and the boys go in detail about what happened to them the police officers are obviously writing this all down. But what they decided to do is at one point they wanted to leave the room to have a break and they'd set something recording in the room to see if they would see the character in these two gentlemen, Charles and Calvin, change when they're not in the room. But they didn't. They went on about the encounter and how it scared them 
and implying about how they're going to be scared to go to work the next day and that they wish that they could just go back to normal. What is this going to do for them and what's going to happen to them and things like that. These police officers started to realise that there was something more to this story and that these guys didn't seem like they were so crazy. And they had also had tests to make sure they hadn't been on drugs and drink and all of that come back is clear. That these guys were not in under the influence of anything. They were generally very tra- traumatised by their experiences and these officers started to see this. And um, obviously these gentlemen like Betty and Barney went through a number of examinations and a number of experiments and stuff that they also passed. And this, like the Betty and Barney one, is another case that is very much looked at to being one of the most real life alien abduction cases, okay, due to the findings, due to that they have passed every test that you would have to take as an abductee um, by the recalls of the things that happened to them and things as well. So like Barney and Betty, this is a really good case as well, one that I most definitely, again, believe in. And I believe in these guys and I believe like the ones I've spoke to you beforehand, these are real, the real deal as well, guys. So the main the man claimed they were abducted by aliens in Mississippi. The police believed them abductees Charles Hickson and Calvin Parker Jr. What is certain about the night of October the 11th, 1973 is this. When Charles Hickson and Calvin Parker Jr. arrived at the Sheriff's Department in Pasagolia, Missy, Mississippi, they were frantic. They told authorities they had been abducted by aliens. Each had a puncture wound in one arm. Police tried to catch them in a lie, but it didn't work. Both men later passed polygraphic tests so the polygraphic tests are what the police use it's like a lie detector and stuff they pass this this is what Betty and that would have had to do as well on Saturday the riverbank were where the men said the close encounter happened got a historical marker calling it one of the best documented cases of alien abduction after decades of avoiding media attention Parker was there for the dedication. Hickson died in 2011 in in 2011. In 1973 Hickson was Parker's for, foreman at a shipyard. The two had gone fishing after work at a abandoned boat lot launch and were still there after the sun went down. I was just getting ready to get some more bait Hickson told the Washington Post in 1975 when I heard a kind of zipping sound. I looked up and saw a blue flashing light. Calvin turned around too. We saw a 30 foot long object with a long dome on the top as it hovered just above the ground. Three small creatures emerged and also hovering. He said the men were suddenly paralysed. The creatures grabbed them with pincher type claws and pulled them towards the object he said i floated inside parker told the bollocks i sun herald in 2018 hickson said they were subject to a physical examination by something that looked like a big eye a constant medical sound buzzing the whole time and then they were dropped off right back in the dark delta where they started. Hickson found Parker standing up, arms raised to the sky and screaming. He told the post they run they ran for help. At first sheriff's investigators thought the men had been drunk or lying. After interviewing the men, they left room with a recorder secretly taping hoping to catch the pair dropping the act once they left. But they didn't. They kept on talking about what they had seen and how scared they were. We did everything we knew to try to break their stories. Jack's country sheriff, Captain Glenn Ryder, told the Post 
in 1975. If they were lying to me, they should be in Hollywood. Overnight, it was a na it was a national news. There was news conferences and cameras bust into the still stunned faces. A UFO investigator from Northwest University flew down and said their story checked out. Skeptics called them liars or said Hicks had an episode of sleep paralysis with hypnotic hallucinations, while Parker was highly suggestible. Believers flooded in to Paragola by the thousands, wrapped in aluminium foil and sitting all night on the hoods of their cars, waiting for visitors from another world. Hickson was 42 at the time and was well known in the community, so perhaps he felt more able to handle the media crush. He recounted the experience to anyone who would listen. He went on Johnny Carson and Dick Covet. He published a book in 1983. Parker, on the other hand, was 18 or 19 when it happened. He had just arrived in Patagonia from an event small from an even smaller town and had planned to earn some extra money before returning home to get married. He told the media he had passed out at the beginning of the whole affair and couldn't remember what happened. The post, the post, Cleve R. Woodson and J.R. explains why a, a 2017 admission from the government was like pouring kerosene on UFO conspiracy theories. Video Monica Uffer and the Washington Post photo Bill O'Leary, the Washington Post. That was the only lie he told. He said the Sun Herald in 2018. In fact, he did remember what happened and was so afraid that aliens had infected him with something that when he got home from the sheriff's department, he took a bath in bleach. Within a few weeks, he skipped town, he got married and picked up work in oil fields. If someone at a job recognised him, he would he would quit. If Hickson was trying to get rich from the story, it didn't work. Perhaps it didn't work. Parker told the son, Harold, that before Hickson's death in 2011, he occasionally paid the old man's electorate electric bill. Parker now in his 60s slowly came out of hiding in recent years and in 2018 published a book on how on a book of his own in March as the city was discussing plans for the maker new witness emerged telling the Mississippi Clarion League ledger that on the night in question, they saw an unidentified flying object with flashing blue lights going up and down the Panaluga River. They said they kept it secret all these years because they were afraid of people's reactions. One of them, Maria Blair, told the Clarion Ledger, the story is very true. That was that's what has bothered me for 45 years. It's been on my mind for 45 years. So with this incident, obviously Calvin and Charles had encountered this alien abduction. They were very, very frantic and upset over the encounter. They recall the alien spaceship turning up. They recall seeing the alien beings and them floating into this spaceship. They recall all of the examinations, things that they had done and even being put back to where they'd started before the encounter. Obviously, uh, a number of professionals tried to trip them up over the stories that never worked and they passed all tests and all things. But not only was it the stories of these guys, but it worked out that around that time and that area, there were a number of other witnesses that had experienced the same object in the sky, but they did not walk forward like Charles and Kelvin because they, as it said, they were very scared and worried about what people would think. 
But obviously, over the years of the stories about what happened to Charles and Calvin, in our more now time, people have started to come forward saying that the truth, the story is true, and obviously it was it was proved true because of the tests that these poor gentlemen had to go through in the first place. So they passed all of that. But there is also no other accounts from other people that say that they see the same object in the sky before Charles and Calvin was actually abducted. So there was a lot more to this story. Now, to me, like the Betty and Barney one, this is a very amazing story. And uh, one of, again, of the most truest alien abduction stories that you could come across all four of these people that are abductees passed all the tests that you would have to take when you say that you've had an alien abduction and you report it so some of them also went through certain recongression treatments and things to try to remember things because obviously at first Betty and Barney could not remember everything that had happened to them and stuff where Charles and Kelvin could so I thought that, you know, this would be a good topic for you guys to, to have tonight because, as I said, this Bold and Bonkers show is going to be about me talking about witch stuff, but it's also about paranormal, UFOs, crypto, all this sort of thing. Anything that you guys want me to talk about as well, any ideas, anything that you want me to, to look over and to do, you've only got to say in the rooms, guys, we'll go back over and I, it gives me ideas for new shows, okay? you guys are more than welcome to join in but I really wanted to cover the UFO side of things because it is one of my big factors and one of my favorite subjects I'm not saying that I'm the the most known person in ufology and that I know everything I don't but I do find it fascinating I do have experiences and I have had things happen to me so for me this rings really true in my research and my work like this is the sort of thing I like to do along with my paranormal and these two stories in some of the categories that I've read through ufology are two of the most outstanding cases that I've ever come across and two that very much jump out to me as being real life alien abductions and real abductees. They most definitely do for many different reasons. And um, over the years, the stories have never changed. They've always stayed the same. You find that in some stories, they seem to change as time goes over. Now, you can normally then tell by who's being truthful and who isn't, because depending on what they went through. But a lot of people that are not being truthful in this sort of thing, stories will change because they won't remember anything that they said from the time before. Where with Barney, Betty, with Calvin and with um, those guys, you know, the stories never changed. They've always been very adamant about what happened to them. For some of them, they've took that to their grave. You know, yes, the story is out there. People are very aware of their abductions. People have seen books and stories and things done, most definitely. But like any person that goes through this, nobody's ever going to fully understand or know what those people went through unless they experience it themselves. Okay, and even if you have experienced it yourself, you're not going to have really experienced it in the same way as what they did. As I said before I started the readings of the, this work, all alien abductions and all alien abductees are different. We all react in different ways to what happens to us. We all recall things in different ways. Some of us remember some things, some of us don't, you know. It's, it's different for everybody, just as the same as paranormal, like when you have your hauntings or you have experiences, everybody experiences things in a different way, don't they? So this was the show, guys. As I said to you, um, I hope that you did enjoy the show and I hope that you found that very interesting. Is there anything that you guys want to ask or you feel that you want to say forward? I will call Dakota or up in a minute to see if there's anything that he wants to announce quickly before we stop the show so if you want to come up Dakota and if you've got anything to announce that you are more than welcome I can answer questions while you're up here um but if you've got anything to say right in the room guys and I will answer quickly but if not we'll see if he comes up if he doesn't then I will be ending the show are you there Dakota
yeah, as Dakota said, this signal is a little bit jumpy there. So please make sure that you tune in tomorrow for the celebration show with the Bold and Bonker lads and all of us. It, there's some amazing news and amazing things that are going to be gave out to all of you tomorrow, guys. And it's going to be really exciting for the um, community and for everybody else. It, you know, it's absolutely going to be amazing for the company. So please tune in and make sure that you tune in to them tomorrow. Um, there will be posts and stuff put up so that you can keep an eye on what the time and everything is, guys. But from me, I hope that you enjoyed the alien abduction story and thank you for tuning in. Stay real, stay true, be safe. Remember to look after and to love your families and remember that when you go to sleep, those spirits creep and they're always around you and stay spooky and I will see you real soon and a merry parting, guys. Until next time, next week's show, guys, will be on the tests that alien abductees go through, okay? So that will be next week's show. So until then, love and light and a merry party. And I'll see you very, very soon. One.